Hi guys, it's Jamie here. Today I'm going to look at some very basic jelly plate printing because this was requested by Audrey in our Mermaid Creator Club. I haven't done both sides because I tend to use jelly plate prints in collage and even add extra processes to them for mixed media work. However, if you do print on both sides, you can create some very interesting papers for your junk journal. With us looking at mermaid theme, I've stuck with C colours using a limited palette of acrylic pouring paints, a few stencils, plastic card, bit of sponge, even a printing stamp. Here I have some really, really cheap copy paper, which is about 80 GSM. Originally A3 that I've just torn in half. This is my first acrylic pouring paint that I'm putting onto the gel plate and using my brayer to roll that out as thinly as possible across the plate. With these jelly plates, you do not normally wash them in between use. So when you do use them the next time, you will possibly pull some paint from a previous project. Now I'm simply laying my paper on that first layer of paint, giving it a good rub over. Before pulling it up, jelly plates are slightly sticky, which is what helps grip that paint to your paper. And that is our first layer of colour, which as you can see has pulled up some old paint on it and created some interesting textures on there. I'm adding the same colour again, which I think was called sea green. I'm using the Arteza pouring acrylics, which I got from Amazon. Now I'm adding a second darker colour again. I'm trying to keep this very, very thin. I'm brayering those two colours together across that gel plate and going back in with that original paper that already has some paint on it, rubbing that down and seeing what we get. So to me with gel printing is pretty much experimentation as to the effects you may or may not achieve which is why I tend to use very cheap copy paper rather than a mixed media paper. Here you can see I've added a thin layer of white and I'm using a stencil and a spare piece of paper to take some of that paint up and move the stencil around the gel plate. Having lifted some of that stencil paint, I'm now adding another layer of white over the top. Notice that I have not printed anything up yet. As I said before, I'm merely experimenting, so I'm coming back in with that original print. This is now its third layer of paint, and I want to see if we can see any of that mermaid fishtail design on the print. And there's a little area you can see up at the top right hand corner. Now I'm laying down the first layer for the second print. I thought I would see what would happen if I did some kind of large wave design using a plastic card and then putting over a layer of white. Now I really am playing because I know that I'll be using these papers in collage. So I'm using an ink stamp to take off an area that's in a flower design. I've added the stencil. Then I'm going to try pulling that paint and see what happens. Well, I'm not overly impressed with that result, but this is the point of this jelly printing to me. It's all about experimenting. So as you can see so far, we've been using different tools on this gel plate surface with the acrylic paint to see what the results might be like. Sometimes using one paint, sometimes using two, brayering it down, adding paper and pulling up prints. In previous gel print projects that I've done, I've used distressing pads, water being added to those. I've also used ink sprays and I've used mica powder and water as well. You don't even have to transfer the paint onto paper. You could transfer it onto some kind of canvas, cloth, newsprint, whatever you want. You can actually use it for transfers of photographs as well. While I feel you never really know what you're going to get, it is an incredibly versatile piece of equipment to have. And the more you play with it, I think the more you will be able to predict the results. 
The reason I like using it is because it is helpful in mixed media and collage art because you do get these different backgrounds and you're never quite sure where it's going to go. I do like it for speed as well and it does give you a variety of different coloured papers so even if you were just to tear those papers down and use them in a collage piece it's incredibly useful to have that stash. I do have an idea for Mermaid Creator Club with some of these papers that I think you're going to enjoy in another tutorial and actually for Art Tribe I've got a couple of ideas of tutorials using these papers but I will hardly touch the surface of the amount of prints I've made in these blue and green colourways. I already have a box of both gel plate print papers and also just normal papers that I've painted different colour backgrounds onto for use within future projects, even masterboards for junk journals. So they are a really popular thing to do because you get these textured backgrounds, you get different shades of colours, maybe colours you wouldn't normally use together. And you can then do what I do, which is tear them or cut them and layer onto other work. As we've been doing here, you can actually use them to experiment with different tools. I've used a plastic card, stencils. I will be using some sponges. You could even use fingers, twigs from the garden. You can take whole flower heads and push those down onto the paint. There's so many different things you can do to create interesting prints for your collage art. They'd only be one aspect of a collage. You might also be using other papers or fabrics or even found objects, depending on whether you're using an art journal, an art board or a canvas or a piece of wood. Here I've used bubble wrap. I'm trying to get some perhaps bubbles onto these prints because that would be suitable also for mermaid papers. I can't really see a great effect on that, but we continue with the experiment and adding more paints and pulling off more prints. For example, this time, instead of using a brayer, I'm using an old store card. This is just me playing, trying to get something a little bit more sea-like. With this next one, I actually use a cut down bathroom sponge. I don't have natural sponges. Basically, just try different things and see what happens. It's only cheap paper and cheap paint and nothing is wasted. You can see I'm tapping off excess onto spare bits of paper because that might be used in a collage somehow. Now I'm just trying to add some bubbles going the other way by not using the gel paint, but adding the paint to the bubble wrap and then printing off the bubble wrap, which has given me much stronger circular shapes on that paper. That's why I will probably be adding extras to these papers for the art tribe projects. I'm thinking of using some ink stamps, some newspaper print, some transfer techniques onto the papers and then using them in a collage. Because getting a jelly plate out and your paints and different materials to create some kind of interesting print or textures as background papers, I do do a lot at the same time because it's only cheap paper. And like I say, I create a store of these and can use them endlessly in future projects. And here's where we are after about 10 to 15 minutes of printing up a lot of papers for future use. I'm thinking I will probably add some additional stuff to these for the art tribe. I may even paint over them with some more acrylics. I may use some marker pens and do a bit of neurographic art. Or Zentangles, I've definitely got an idea about doing a modern looking collage art journaling piece. 
and I think with some of these I'll be using some mica powder on top to get some shiny shiny surface which does need protecting afterwards otherwise it comes off in your hands which I think is going to look really pretty as a masterboard for the mermaid club so plenty of things i can do with these prints i hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to using jelly plates and i will catch you very very soon <laughs>